Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm obviously not Pastor Jerry. <laughs> Uh, my name is Reverend Kate Esther Johnston. Um, I've been here with y'all before, but for those of you who haven't met me before, um, I'm here to worship with you all today on this beautiful first morning of Advent. So um, first of all, we want to go over some announcements. Now, I'm not part of your worship community, so I'm going to announce what, I don't know, what I think is important in here, but you'll probably be like, none of that was important and something else was. So I'll ask for you to just pitch in here in a minute <laughs> when we get to that part. Uh, it looks like you've got some prayer requests always in the bulletin. You can look over, make sure we're keeping those people in prayer. Birthdays and anniversaries for you. Uh, there's a lectionary study that's moving to Mondays at 10 a.m., and that's beginning Monday, November 29th. So that is important. That's tomorrow. So make sure if you're a part of that, you get that on your calendar for tomorrow morning. Um, the walking group will start at 9 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. That says it's an hour later, so make sure you take note of that as well. Um, oh, and then our church is doing this too, so I know a bit about this, the Muncie Afghan Refugee Resettlement Committee. <laughs> so um, if you have donations for that, um, make sure that you uh, probably check in with someone here of exactly what boxes y'all are donating and how you wanna do that. But the information here is in the bulletin and it's a great program uh, helping to resettle people. I know a family has already come to Muncie and we're getting more. So whatever you can donate um, would be great. And they're taking financial donations as well. Are there any other announcements? Yep. Some of you may have seen the email announcement from Jenny last night about the death of Joyce Libis. She was a longtime member of Holy Trinity and was a part of a cell group that I was in. And she moved several years ago to the Philadelphia area to be with her family. So uh, she died peacefully in her sleep. Her family was there. And when more information is available, Jenny will make that available. So we'll keep um, Joyce's family in our prayers. Joyce was her name? Joyce Libis. OK, so Joyce. We'll definitely be thinking of her this morning and uh, in the weeks ahead. I'm sure Pastor Jerry will also have some funeral information coming out for y'all. Are there any other announcements this morning? Okay. With that, sorry, I'm so used to wearing a mask at the hospital. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> okay. Let us then gather our hearts and our minds, breathe in the spirit today welcome into this place of worship as we go to God and worship in our confession and forgiveness. Let us stand together. <clears throat> in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us and all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of word and sacrament in the Church of Christ, and by his authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our first hymn this morning, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers, number 244.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord, Lord Christ, Christ, and come. Mm. By, By your, your merciful, merciful protection, protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins. And redeem us for your life of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You can be seated. I'm going to say a word about the Advent uh, lighting here, especially since it's our first Sunday. So if you're a kid here, I see some in the back and some in the front. I want to make sure especially that you all can see this one candle lit right here. If you can't see it, I give you permission to walk in the aisle or stand up if you need to to make sure you can see this one candle lit we have this week. It's the first Sunday in Advent, so I want everyone together to say Advent. Advent. And that means that we are waiting. We are waiting for Jesus to be born. And we are waiting for Christmas when we celebrate that. So this week we have one candle lit. And this candle reminds us to hope while we wait. So this morning together we are all going to focus on hoping while we wait as we sing our song together to usher in this Advent season. So let us sing together, light one candle. Our first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 to 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Be God. We will read Psalm 25 responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our Lord because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. So may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness 
that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of Lord Jesus with all of his saints. Word of God, word of life. Our gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and with great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today marks the beginning of our new year in the church, Advent. It is a time for reorienting, taking some new steps in the church, It is a time in which we sit in darkness for a bit together. We light some candles, and we take time to see what God is growing with us and in us. I'm in a new season in my own life, and honestly ready for about anything other than journeying in the dark, especially purposely for a bit. I ended up with my very own trauma diagnosis this year after helping too many people at the end of their life with COVID. I say this not because I really enjoy saying it, but because it is honestly where I am at the beginning of this Advent season, different from others. With no end in sight to the continued surges in the pandemic and the constant ringing of my on-call phone, some support from my therapist, a lot of encouragement from my family and prayer, I resigned my position as a chaplain at the hospital about two weeks ago in order to make my own health a priority. This has been one of the hardest seasons of my life. And I know many of you out there and far beyond these walls could say something very similar, whether you have your own trauma diagnosis or not. And yet, here we are, together, whether we're ready to admit our hardships to the person next to us in the pew or not, we've been pushed into this season of intentional, spiritual slowing down, purposeful waiting, looking inward, and the darkness and the unknown. 
I personally would do pretty much anything to just skip to Christmas this year. But that's not what God has for us. However, I am taking some hope from the Israelites in our passage from Jeremiah this morning, who have also found themselves in a time of unwanted waiting and unknown. Our prophet this morning is speaking to a people who are all in exile. They have been taken forcibly from their own land, and they have found themselves in this completely foreign place before them. To say they are unhappy about this would be an understatement, and yet that is where we meet them today on our first Sunday in Advent, people in the midst of exile. And Jeremiah reminds them in this text, surely the days are coming. They can't just roll over and quit living as they find themselves in this place they don't want to be and didn't expect to be. Jeremiah reminds them just a few chapters before, if you were flipped back in that story, that they have a lot of work they're expected to do in this time of waiting. They're expected to keep building houses, growing gardens, falling in love and marrying and having children. They are learning to live in the unknown, in the waiting, in this deeply uncomfortable place that we all dislike as humans, often known as the chaos or the dark. And so, here we find ourselves in the same time of spiritual discipline with God, learning to walk in this darkness with our Creator together. Barbara Brown Taylor helped me to rethink our spiritual times of darkness in her book entitled, Learning to Walk in the Dark. She says this, she says, I have learned things in the dark, that I could never have learned in the light, things that have saved my life over and over again. New life starts in the dark. Whether it is a seed in the ground, a baby in the womb, or Jesus in the tomb, it starts in the dark. She has reframed this time of darkness as a starting point, a place of learning, of creativity, of imagination, of the beginning of new life with God. She has reframed darkness as an opportunity with God. You can come stand right here with me. You have to be quiet. Thank you. And this seems right where we need to be as a people of God right now. The church as a whole has had to learn completely new ways of being together over these past two years. You know it, and I know it. We've had to worship in new ways together. We are a people that love tradition. I do too. And that is especially true in our churches. It reminds us of our connectedness, the saints, our own baptisms in this sanctuary, the covenants we promised when we got married right here. This sanctuary holds significance for us as a people. That lived faith brings us so much wisdom. And to be honest, It makes change really hard. A season where we have been forced in and out of this very sanctuary. This season where we have been forced to see community in a new way while still connecting together. We've had a lot of change to contend with in a short time. And with change comes grief. Letting go of that which was. That grief at marking change is good, it's even necessary but it becomes a place of comfort and stuckness. And I I say this myself with the own heart of this season. We get used to being in that place of frustration and grief at all the change, and we just wanna go back, but we can't go back. We have to wait for something new and different, but possibly, possibly something very good. We see that with the Israelites waiting in Jeremiah today, and we too, have been called to build houses, to cultivate gardens, to parent, to love, to get married in the midst of all of this, trusting that God can keep working in the dark. I take a lot of hope in that this season for this parish here and for my own life personally. Maybe you have found yourself in some darkness this season, stuck and afraid to move to something new. Maybe the seasons of change have been overwhelming 
Maybe you find yourselves in need of changing jobs or even careers. Maybe you find yourself on the brink of something completely unknown, a new diagnosis, a broken relationship, living life without a loved one you had counted on being there. Whatever has thrust you into that change and discomfort, this season is for you. This season is for us to learn to walk in the midst of the darkness together, to explore new ways that God is speaking to us together, to try out a new way of living faithfully and then keep trying again if needed. Yes, to grieve and lament as necessary, but also to keep living and loving and learning along the way. If you find yourself in the midst of deep change, either here at the parish or in your own life personally, I'd love to invite you into this season very intentionally. May we see this darkness, this unknown, this change as an opportunity for learning with God. May we remember those seeds buried deep in the darkness and take time to partner with God as we allow something new to grow there. I cannot say how that will manifest for you this season, or even myself, honestly. There are not a lot of guarantees as you give yourself over to God in the midst of darkness and change. However, I do know that this is the season that reminds us that no matter what happens in that unknown dark space, God will be with us. God is capable of growing all kinds of new things in the dark. We can refuse to enter the darkness and cling to our comfort and what we know, and we will not see new life. For new life starts in the dark. So with our trepidation held close, let us enter this darkness together as a parish and together with God. Let us build some houses and cultivate some gardens along the way. Let us be open to the new ways in which God is growing each one of us. Let us be open to the new ways in which God is growing this parish here in Muncie. Let us enter a deep season of trust with God. New life starts in the dark. O come, O come, Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. As we continue to contemplate God's word this morning, let us raise our voices together strongly as we proclaim our faith, singing, Lo, he comes with clouds descending.
As we continue to profess our faith together, let us share the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers today, I will conclude each petition with, Hear us, O God, and your response is, Your mercy is great. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all creation. Hear us, O oh God. God of mighty redwoods and microscopic plants, fields and city parks, the wind and the waves, be a healing balm to our wounded planet. May we nurture what you have lovingly created for us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hear us, O oh God. God of equity and compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our community. Hear us, O oh God. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, divorces, new unions, new jobs, retirements, healing, and life's transitions of every kind, especially to those we name aloud, like Joyce Libis and her family and friends, or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of promises kept and new dreams awakened, shelter your people from destructive storms. We pray for those who, whose lives have been upended by natural disasters. For the work of Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, and other relief organizations. Hear us, O oh God. God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, you sent your son Jesus to guide us into the future. We give thanks for opening our hearts to give to your missions at Holy Trinity and our future building campaign. We pray that our building renovation will honor and glorify your mission in this time and for future generations to come. Hear us, O oh God. God of compassion and community, we give you thanks for the saints who have journeyed with us and now abide in you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. Hear us, O oh God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I, do you share the peace of Christ here right now? I'm sorry, I forgot to ask. Share the peace of Christ with one another this morning. <laughs> morning, peace of Christ. I was like, uh-oh, every church does it. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah. She did it.
as we come to a time of offering this morning, I think you can be seated. As we come to a time of offering this morning, uh, you can see in your bulletin there are some different ways to give online if you're watching at home or if that's something that's easy for you on your phone. So you can follow the directions there. I just want to make sure that you take note of that, especially if you're at home. All of that to say that as we give our gifts, we give them because Christ has continually given to us. So let us give back this morning with joy, with love, and in hope this Advent season. Let us receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast in the, on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered by one Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As a reminder, during this season where we're taking communion in a bit different way, I just want to remind for any visitors today, there are some instructions for distribution uh, in your bulletin. But remember, you'll come up. I will give you a piece of bread 
uh, wafer and you will get a cup and go back to your seat and we will partake together. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The bread has been broken for each one of us. Let us taste and see the Lord is good.
the Lord continues to provide for us, let us give thanks to God. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with your words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. God's work. Our hands. God's love. Our hearts. God's story. Our voices. I'm not going to sing like Pastor Jerry. <laughs> but I do have a benediction. and serve the Lord.